Now, the message might look a bit different depending on what you're trying to connect, but it usually goes along the lines of the attached accessory uses too much power. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Joko Pak, I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. As mobile musicians using our iPads and iPhones to make music with, we many times want to enhance our production sessions using peripherals such as controllers, sound interfaces or even USB microphones. And so we go on our merry ways to get a camera connection kit such as this one. This is the lightning type so it has a lightning connector at one end and a USB connection at the other end and so you connect that to your iPad or iPhone and then it should just be a simple thing to connect your USB peripheral to this port and it should work right well sometimes it doesn't so you might already have come across this problem you've gotten this far and then you try to connect your USB peripheral and you get hit with this screen right here and this can happen with MIDI controllers sound interfaces or a USB mic now I'm using a Zoom Q2 HD handy video recorder and it has a USB microphone function. So it will allow you to use it as a USB microphone with your laptop, whether it be a MacBook or a PC, even connected to your iPad. But as you can see, this isn't working. Now the message might look a bit different depending on what you're trying to connect to your iDevice, but it usually goes along the lines of accessory unavailable. The attached accessory uses too much power. USB is a digital interface and so it has circuits that needs to be powered to be able to work. And so this is a problem and to get around it you actually have to power the USB connection. And so there are two ways to do that. One is to use an Apple USB 3 to lightning connector. It has a lightning connector that connects to your iPad or iPhone at one end. It has two ports. One is a USB connection and the other port is for connecting a charger. Not only are you powering the USB connection, you're also powering and charging your iDevice. So let's try this one more time. And when I turn it on, we no longer get a message on our iPad. Now the second way is to use powered USB hub where the USB hub is being powered through an adapter connected to your wall power socket. But you're still going to need either the CCK or the Apple USB 3 to lightning connector to be able to make a USB connection with your iDevice. Just connect that. Oh, look at this dongle mess. So I'm going to turn on the Q2 HD again and we get no message. This means there's enough power for the USB connection to work. However, this is not a guarantee that whatever you connect in this manner will work in the end. You see, in this case, I'm having problems still trying to get this thing to work with my iPad. This is the iPad mini one. And when I went from iOS 6 to 7, this stopped working. So Apple probably changed something in the code for the OS and that made this not work anymore. Before you buy a sound interface or a MIDI controller or a USB microphone, be sure to check if that device you're getting is class compliant with iPad and iPhone. So if you're looking to buy a MIDI controller, sound interface or USB microphone, then the best way to find out if that particular device is supported by your iPad or iPhone is to either Google it, search YouTube for videos or hit up a forum. The AudioBuzz forum is full of experience experienced iOS musicians and they might be able to answer your questions. They might even own the particular device you're looking to get. And if you're using Facebook, then I recommend the iPad Musician Group. It's got loads of knowledgeable members and they're very, very helpful too. So there you go. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. I've also got a Patreon page, so if you want to support creativity and good content here on YouTube, then why not join up on Patreon? Now, if that isn't your cup of tea, you can always share my videos, press the thumbs up and... Well, I guess that's it. By the way, if you want to see another awesome video with a very intricate dongle mess and how to connect a normal regular Ethernet cable to your iPad or iPhone, then click on the box to the left. In the box to the right, you'll find my Hack Attack playlist containing reviews, tutorials, guides and more. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.